can aggress you. Is this safe lane, Husker? This might be. Um, well, like, they've done this before, right? We thought it was going to yeah, be Supreme that's mid, right. and it wasn't. So this is probably going to be Huskar mid. I like oh, Huskar mid more than I like Morphling mid up against an OD I matchup. You, I, I think in this particular game, you, you have to Huskar. I do not have another choice. You really don't. So, it looks like Kezu will be yeah, on that okay, puck. Are, right. This is what I'm saying. I, I, the three position, a three-position puck, I think, does his job just as well. And you pick something that's going to... And we were seeing a transition towards that position for pucks as it was kind of becoming clear that the offlane was all about this initiation and control in fights. And that is what puck leans itself towards very well. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that. Glad that we... The classic offlane has come back. It was, it was a little bit interesting for a while in the metal last year where you had these sort of interchangeable farming side lane cores and a lot of the playmaking on us fell onto the four and five position. But... I, I think it's just good for the game to have this differentiated offlane role where kind of tread water in the lane and make these spectacular teamfight plays. Well, and we'll get to see what it can pull off in this game as this, this decides whether Hippomaniacs have a leg to stand on or if they are completely done and dusted in these minor qualifiers. I think I do like this. You're in this does it, it looks more clear, right? The 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 order to it, like you've got a lot of focus damage coming out. Whereas I'm looking at Hippomaniacs, and if if the Huskar someone gets shut down lane, there's not going to be enough time for this morphing to get online. And I don't like how Axe, I don't like Axe's odds rather of trying to control the mid game tempo when he's up against the puck. Does life break count as a mobility? For I said good day, sir. I don't... Yes, but I think you're yeah you're think... leap, you're leaping your spell immune, so you won't be stunned. Yeah, and and it and it uh, yeah, and life break does apply the purge at the beginning of spell immune. So yeah, you're fine. Yeah, it's a basic spell, but it's like yeah, the spell immune part is the important part. So you'll break the call and you won't get stunned. Pretty damn effective, actually. Why this hero can be. Completely disgusting. Now, I wonder, if, does I, I wonder if he gets ags if that that uh, interaction change. But I'm I think we're right about ags. Yeah, he shouldn't. No, um, because it like it, what well, it just let me check. Cause it's it's ags allows it to pierce spell immunity. So theoretically, it should actually stun him. Well, no, 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 no. What I, what I'm saying is it, the mechanic right is that it would prevent you from moving with the life break but because the spell not only does the spell immunity get applied but it applies a purge just like when you activate bkb bkb yeah. pur applies a strong dispel to you at the in addition to making you spell immune right so you the question at... is if you had bkb already active ags dream coil can stun you right but the question is do, do you still get that purge as husker anyway it's just something we can tell yeah, I, I still think you get stunned. Like, you are going to get stunned regardless if it's an Axe upgrade for the puck. But before it, right, you should enough. actually purge. You should be fine because it's spell immunity, right? Like, you have to think of uh, the state of life break uh, similar to, or well, actually exactly the same as a BKB being active. So anything that goes through BKB should actually impact you sure. in... While, while you're leaping, yes. Yeah. Like, the base of the spell at the start is the important part, but let's like, say you're mid-leap and you get Primal Roared, I'm pretty sure you end up stunned when you arrive. Which is always funny to watch. This looks like he's delivered himself to be killed. Uh, after that fairy crafting, we're going to see an early movement coming out from Vega. Axe is far back already. Hippo Maniacs, you can see the way they're posturing. They are not willing to take any risks. Yeah, Vega is Vega, and and Vega knows that, right? Vega's got to know that they have him a little. Curious of whether they are going to actually commit. You can maybe find a kill onto the axe. Like you have to keep in mind, there's a K to will them down. On top of that, I think the thing that people always forget about Puck is he's got good about base damage, things. and the loser orb allows him to relocate. I just, I just don't see them. I, I don't see them losing this terrible for any period of time. Mutters like, oh, I mean like I mean, first wave and that's it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's absolutely it. They 
are going to start with three up here on the side of Hippomaniac. So actually just scouting to see if anyone's blocking. Is MMT going to camp Courier here? He might do. Because this position. Husker, oh, oh no, Husker lost the block big time. Oh if wow. If he gets his Courier camped, oh he is screwed in this lane. If this Courier dies. He's feeling a little oh, bit pressure. MMT? MMT? No, he's going to go back for it. He wants on the return, so he definitely sees it, and he will. Here it comes. Out you come. Oh, oh he left. Oh. He TP'd out. What? He TP'd out like the Kurgan was right there. What the? All right. That, that was bad for me. Hell? I'd actually changed to fog mode. So I was sitting there. And it was like, oh, he's going to come out any second. But no, he just gives <laughs> <No>. up. <laughs> that was okay. That was bizarre. Missed opportunity. And that does mean that Curry can begin to recover as he is actually evening up with Mage already. He's at that sweet spot he wants to be, which is half HP, where he can attack pretty damn fast, and Mage can't contest him. Hey, have you ever seen a, uh, an axe? To be fair, a modder is probably like, get your ass up here! <laughs> anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> like, I'm missing a few CS, help me. I was just watching the axe get ever so squishy, as he's up to 16 strength loss, to about 480 HP. They're actually bringing uh, yes. the Undying up here, though. They, they realize it's try and try time. Okay. Is interesting because in this bot lane we talked about dots and how it impacts puck. Luckily though, battle hunger you can get rid of it. You have got some burst damage to nuke off creeps. Stop though. Uh oh, okay. TP out. Zenny, this TP is brave. Out. He doesn't Very get it. close, but no, that's three heroes on top of you, buddy. And it's even worse because he tried for that TP. The walk He's of shame do begins. The walk of shame. And you need to be there for a quick level two because if you're gonna try and try Wait. scenario, Wait. shadow wave. Look at Susker. That's that's one bracer, and he's got 16.3, 16 HP regen. Uh, he's actually going to be close to death there. And he's getting he's getting it through the astral though. That's yes. the thing. You you continue regening while you're banished. Oh, that's true. Like you could actually, if you solve before you go astral, you'd be fine as well. Mm -hmm. It's pretty ridiculous. Thus, every time Mage tries this, he's trying to stay competitive here. Hoskar's not really falling behind too much. And the parts that he is, is just because of the Astral. Like, you expect to be a few CS behind an Odie in this type of lane, but as you get these levels, yeah, you're going to exactly. see that Astral not be used aggressively anymore. And being Aww, aggressive in the top... Madara? Gets ran down by Muff, just casually here. They that had the Poison Touch. such a weird place for that to... Okay. That's the only thing, though. Like, there's no other way that they can get the kill on you. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Axe. Saberlight's gone pretty deep here. Kezu does have the illusory orb. We'll throw it out. He says, Saber, you're not leaving that way. Yeah, he's got the waning rift as well. And it looks like Axe should be going down. He's going to use the stick. Shouldn't make a difference as Kezu side steps forward. And doesn't want to waste any time as he TPs back to lane. Actually, Kezu, look at his damage already. Yeah, look at his damage already as well. After 69, he hits hard. You can't underestimate this. Yeah, and that's, and that's pre-null. It will get 10 times worse. No uh, aggressive on a Pexu here. We're going to keep the Poison Touch going. Memorphs is activated by Madara Supreme. Oh, God. Soul Rip almost gets him. He's going to continue on a Pexu, trying to tank up with the Decay, but they're going to lift back on a Muff instead. Look for that kill. We'll be able to find it. Supreme's still chasing here as he's agged up. And Pexu, got to be careful. See him once more. They'll finish him off, but Supreme needs to start morphing to move away. Is it going to be enough? Shadow Wave will help him a little bit. It's going to be a close call, though. They will back off as they see the ET arrive. Yeah, well played. Uh oh, poison touch. Maybe next time he should be fine. They can't aggress like this with Madara in the metamorphosis. Oh, Kezu, I mean, Muff is just getting a ton of value as ET. Right. Fuck me while living life on the edge here, toying with the axe who has gone past the tower to get the creeps. Love it. What about that puck play? Mage in the mid lane. He's getting pretty low here. Luckily, Curry isn't even halfway towards six. And you can already see an XP disparity True. between these two. I'm actually concerned because as soon as he does reach six, he just life breaks you and you're dead. And and he's and he's a level up too. He's almost a full level ahead of this OD in the mid lane. This is see, this is my question about this matchup. I was not I, I was not I was not convinced that it was as OD favored as as it would have been in previous patches. Oh, it's it's just not. It's, you're in this scenario now where it's like because the way the arcane orb works you can't just casually spam it out around level four yeah it's so it's so mana expensive you don't have that free restore anymore 
is under attack. Pex is looping around, but he's not going to catch anybody here. Oh, he's just going to move straight towards bot because I believe Kezu has said something along the lines of, can we deal with this freaking axe that is sitting between my towers? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the one of the powers of the axe. Oh, OD? Yeah, well, you well, look away for a moment. We were talking about that the minute he hits six. Oh, I was watching for another six because Kezu has got access to the dream call now. But Saberlight can always just... Oh, he actually doesn't have a TP. They can walk in, they'll realize it as well. Sorup gets him down a little bit lower and there's the dream call commit. As questions will be asked as to why Axe had no TP. He breaks the call. Gives the kill over to Kezu. Nice guy. Uh, and there you go in the mid lane, the life break again. You saw Mage barely moved away in time from Gari. That is terror. Yeah. The horror That's story is going to be a problem. He can just keep building braces as well. I mean, he's got his boots completed, and then you just go into another bracer, then the armlet. You're going to have so much health. Almost 50% HP, and he's still getting 20% regen. 20 <laughs> flat HP regen. That's nuts. Uh, balances out at this point around the half HP mark, which is where you're too tanky for the OD to kill you, but you attack fast enough that he can't risk trying to engage with you. You actually need a hard stun, and you look on the side of Vega, they don't have many in the way of that. It's mainly just the Rubik. Two heroes sent up through the dire jungle, including an ET with a DD. Can he do something though? He's trying to stack as much damage with the spirit. The chase is on to Madara. They've yeah, got the lift, they'll turn around maybe next time, he's feeling the pain. They're actually going to use metamorphosis, but maybe next time's already down. My full move away in time. Can he get the courier? Oh, he almost got the courier. They're dangling in front of him. And Kezu is here now. He has got the dream call. If you can catch both of these, it's going to be nice. There we go. Moves in, Wayne Rift is there as well. The turn around, finish off ET. Kezu taking a lot of damage though. Won't matter, as they just overwhelm Dazzle as he's left behind. As his comrade is already dead. That is the recovery mage needed. Yes, it is. Meanwhile, just a, an attempt on the Saberlight Axe bottom comes to nothing as Pexu came in, dropped the tombstone on the backside near the tower, but Axe just ran right away. It's an interesting move coming out. I think the Undying struggling to find relevance here. Kari gets lifted back. He likes it. Oh, no. Yeah, they get rid of the silence on him instantly. The timing on that as well. If the Waning Rift connects, you can probably finish him off. Well, I say that with a dazzle nearby. In fairness, <laughs> though, we said before about this, Shallowgrave doesn't tend to get level before five. Mage. Oh no. No, 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 no. They've got the poison touch. They can keep chasing the burn. He's feeling it. They can't get close enough, though. He will escape. It looks like ET didn't opt for a point in Echo Stomp. We haven't really been seeing that much, actually. It's usually been this two points in Astral, one in the nature, uh, natural order. As a result, TB is. To kill. TB's got a lot of space, though. He is. He's top of CS, up to 61, compared to a 39 on the Morphling. Okay, but some of those are jungle CS because uh -oh. Husker is still heading out with, oh boy. Well, that's pretty deep. Husker may have overstepped the line here. They're going to zone out too, but Kezu's here as well. Dream call, oh, waiting rip. Silence on him, yeah. Yep, he can't do anything but die here as Kezu claims a kill, and now Muff's a little bit too deep. Elder Time trying to move away. Pexu will go down. Shallow Grave is there. He's going to turn around to hit on the Madara, but when he comes out, he's going to be dead from the Astral. I mean, it's Saberlight, meanwhile, is still kind of thinking about it, but I don't think that's... I don't think that's what you want there, buddy. Especially, they can see you. Oh, well, they might catch Kezu, but he already was suspicious there. No, he knew. He knew. That ward's been down. Absolutely. Well, he didn't know if they TP'd or left. They were trying for something cute, seeing as Saberlight hasn't got a blink. He just completed the Vanguard. All the while, the pressure continues to come in the mid. They know they can't let OD get ahead because he will just ruin the Huskar's day. Especially seeing as, you know, when you build all these braces, you're not really stacking a lot of int. Yeah, but that was that was a really important kill on it, it, There was a little bit of a gap. He was, I believe, the first to, to hit 4k net worth and just fell back after he died there. Absolutely. You can't let a Huskar snowball. It's one of these type of heroes that if he does get a great lane, he just takes over the entire game. I mean, in, in, in this game right here, right, setting setting his arm timing back, like, even 90 seconds is for a significant. All the while, Madar just continue to farm. At this rate, he'll end up top net worth for the next two minutes. Caraballe, folks. Doesn't matter what you're doing to him in lane, there's always a jungle. 
Yep. Oh my god, side clip! <laughs> <laughs> Supreme! That's, oh my god, second game that we've seen. Just a Morphling walking around on full Agi and bop. They never learn. They never learn. It's a triple null talisman OD and you thought you'd be okay. And now that wow, OD might OD. not be okay himself. <laughs> Curry will move in. He's got the Astral. And look, the TP's all of the team cover. Three members here to back up the Outward Devourer. Yeah, that's, that's four levels in imprisonment there. So the skill is now on a 10 second cooldown. Good thing he did max out as well. He would have had his goose cooked. And all the while, the person we haven't talked about is maybe next time, who has just been soaking in the XP in this top lane. What he does? Oh, oh no, he got the perfect steal as well. Oh, that is, that's actually disgusting. Full <laughs> Suddenly. strength morph Rubik, 1400 HP. <laughs> Good luck killing him now. The dream for a Rubik in this type of scenario is to get it that early. Basil just going to chase here. They might be able to run him down, actually. He moves so slow because this is the other thing with the way Aji is. That's right. That's right. 299 movement speed, and that's with boots. They'll find him. They turn to Rubik himself. Says, if you want to be me, I'll be you. And it used to be so simple as Rubik. You just, you took... That steal, you're fully strength, you didn't care. Now, there was no now you have to worry. You have to worry about that movement speed these days. Top tower has fallen. Actually, it's pretty deep here. Just get some wards down. This should set up for the push coming out from Terrorblade. Metamorphs is coming off cooldown soon in 15. Looks like they're trying to pile on the pressure because they've made sure Madara has a decent stack of gold, but now they need to utilize him to tower push because he's the only one who can. Well, and say that. Meanwhile, Husker just completed his arm. What he is out here looking for. Radiance bottom tower. Train the Halberd next as well. He doesn't want to have to worry about either the TB or the OD. Still seems to forget the magic damage is a thing though. Mage thinking about this. He just wants to slow down the push, get rid of a few of the creeps. The moon in. Oh, Supreme with the backstab. Knocks OD straight towards the Husker, and that's the kill they want. That adaptive. Yeah, he, he, had, he wasn't fully morphed to add. He had a bit of strength there. Oh, wow. Look at Pexu go here. Dreamcall committed. Curry in a little bit of trouble. Shallow Graves there. The lift, though, to stop him from attacking. Life break up the high ground. Gets the wrong puck, though. Kezu getting low. Needs to be killed. Earth Splitter is enough to bring down the Undying. And Curry's still alive. Meanwhile, on the back foot, Kezu, he's taking an interesting escape route. He's got the loser orb available. He needs to use it right now. Oh, there we go. He'll make it out. What did Curry life break there? He life breaked one of the illusions. A puck illusion. Okay. Yeah, got up to the high ground, and then last stage, Puck just took too much damage from the right clicks alone. Got it, got it. Dyer's middle tower is Fun under times. Dyer's but, you know, they fully had him. Fortified. But this is the problem with the dazzle Huskar combo. You need to eliminate that Dazzle first. Yeah, I mean, in a way, it, 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 it doesn't matter, right, that Husker is taking more magic damage if he's getting graved in a timely manner. Absolutely, and of course, Armlet. Well, there isn't a hero in the game that uses Armlet better than the Huskar. And no. if he wants, it's, Not you know, right now. if he wants to be on that low health, he will. You know, you can't try and go. Ah, we don't need to deal with him. He'll be full HP. He's always going to make sure he's around the half HP mark at least. This how this halberd is going to be a problem for them. Definitely. Well, how do they eliminate him then? It's like it, it's all on puck right now. But we said about stacking these braces and you look at his strength it's already right. got him up to 2k hp well it's not only is it 2k hp but he's getting 40 some look at this i mean he's getting 40 some regen 50 regen at 1200 hp like that's that's very very hard to deal with you you've got to power through that i think the words you you're looking have, for freaking you don't have nuts. that much nuke on top of puck and now they're gonna rush which is so easy with the new dazzle because of the bad juju yeah it is they're running down. Actually, did the... I can't remember if the bad juju works on Roche. I haven't taken note of that before. No, it doesn't. Thank you God. No. no, thank God. That would be beyond busted. And Curry... <laughs> Curry was letting himself get pretty low there. That's the life of Hostile. Right, usually... That's, that's our omelet. That's the thing. Usually you kind of like pull out to the side uh, of the pit so it keeps walking back just as your omelet runs out. But he felt more confident with everyone in the pit with him. On the hunt through the red. There is Blink Dagger. 
can he do with it is the question. He can see a creep wave and slow down any push opportunity they have in the mid lane. Because you look right okay. now at Hippomaniac's movement, they're just invading the jungle. Yeah, and they're not only they're invading the jungle and they're, they're taking away this space for the Terrorblade to find. He's down bottom pushing here. Well, Pox here as well. So it should be a safe push as they scour behind Metamorphosis has been used. Madara wants this here too. It's usually useless, but you know what? It's a distraction. You get out of the way this early, you don't feel the need to come for it later. Uh, Huska? It's gold. Okay. All right. He TP's in. The tombstone did break the trees. That will make the tower deniable. There we go. Huska gets it. They didn't want to commit too hard. They knew they couldn't because the shrine, of course, is, well, right next door to that tier two. They always that's risk a, the that's a very big deal there because you're you're exactly as you were saying for the tower, right? They're, they're pushing for the gold there on Terrorblade. They're they're pushing there partly because that's one of the the most efficient ways in the Terrorblade can be uh, accumulating resources of, is to push and get that tower pull. So that deny becomes even more significant. And he needs a lot in this game because this isn't that type of game yeah. where you as as a as a Terrorblade goes, ah, oh, Haskell's low HP. Uh, that was like high on HP, or relatively I'm low. I'll just Sunder finish off the final tap. If he does get well, stupidly low, there's always that shallow grave, and he's never going to be above half HP anyway. But you look at what's. You also look at what's happened to the. Right? And at ten, at ten minutes into the game, uh, I'm not sure it was ten, but maybe eight. It was actually Puck that was high. So he was he was Husker hit 4K net worth briefly and then died, and Puck was the first to 4K net worth. So he was the most farmed on his team since then. Terrorblade is now up to 9k, and there is quite a gap between then the Hippo Corps and then the Puck. Nobody else on the Vegas side is farming right now. I'm just trying to find a way to stem off this aggression that's coming out. As Hippo Maniacs, they claim a tier 2, and this is just going to rinse and repeat. They can go mid, they can go top. This is the power spike, Pascal. In fact, he's going to pressure high ground. Yeah, and, and Vega just looks like they 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 sort of realized early in the game that OD was not going to be the lane encounter of the Husker they had hoped, and they made a few adjustments in terms of attempting to apply pressure, but they haven't found a way yet to deal with it in the mid game. Well, and they're struggling. You already see with Armla all, and he sustains around half HP. Uh, MNT has life break. Well, Science going to be out on Akari. They'll get him low. They can't finish him off. He has got the halberd as well, so they're reluctant. The disarm, just to make sure no one tries to get aggressive. That abilities. It's insanely strong. You can't just circle around and just overwhelm him. You think about all the heroes that would have been decent against him. Like, imagine PL, right? Imagine PL trying to dive in, surround, so you don't know which one's real. It doesn't matter. Just disarm him, walk away. Yeah, and that, and that had been one of the classic kind of Husker was any illusion hero. Talking about a four-second disarm. Four second disarm on at max level a 12 second cooldown. You want to feel disgusting, Alan? If you ever get a, a Chaos Knight pick in your game, pick Huska. Smoke play down here. They may get something for this. Oh, they, they can't gonna be lift. It's, yeah. Oh, the call. The four stuff away a little bit late. The mage pretty deep. There's a shotgun through. They'll get rid of him. The dream calls down on a two. But the storm on the three with the ice splitter as well. Kezu woken up, but he'll leave behind his teammates. The buyback comes out with the Rubik. They've already lost him and the Undying. And now what do you do? It's looking like you might got Huskar, but you have to go back because Madara is on the push. Actually, he needs to micro on this loose to make sure Saberlight can't get close enough. Saberlight doesn't want to get close enough anymore. They're just going for the trade. Oh, hell no. Actually, Curry, he's poking at the tier fours. They need to be careful about this. That trade's awfully optimistic, though. That's, that's one terror blade. Well, he ends up getting the tower and half the health on the range racks before having to back away. Oh, they, they, they almost actually got morphing on the way out there. They were pinging, but they couldn't get the lift off. Yeah. Now, that's the danger. You really hope to get a kill on the disengage, but the, the danger of that, though, is that if they get, a, if they get an offensive pickoff, like, I guess you got your... I, I guess it's less bad. You still got your tier 2 mid, so there's no danger of double rack. All right, fair enough. That's a big thing. Zashi had done a decent job of making sure that any sort of progression that Hippomanix has is focused around Huskar, so no one else has been able to just do what they want in their lanes. Oh, they, they've got to find a way to get this OD back. On this shrine, he has actually now got the car. We'll be going towards the Yasha right. next, but the, the eyes are really on Madara and what he gets next. He's actually going for the Lincoln Sphere. 
A little bit scared of that E-Blade shotgun build. I mean, I feel like just get BKB, actually. At this stage, I yeah, just get that's BKB. Yeah, was, was, that's what I was contemplating. I just don't think Lincoln think does that full. much for you. There's plenty of ways to pop it as well. A pop? Oh, they're gonna pop this Dazzle. Uh, he has no way out of this. It's only Dazzle. This is Shallow Grave. The TP as well. They actually don't have the means to stop him, but he'll die anyway. Have the damn that. He waited too long, actually. He might be able to make that because it looked like maybe next time was out of range, so he couldn't use the telekinesis lift. But you know, it doesn't matter. They get the kill. It's just a dazzle. He forced all these heroes to rotate. And Hippomaniacs have actually calmed down. Because they don't have that Aegis anymore, you can already see the BKB queued up and almost complete for Kari. Once Hoskar has that, look towards the Vega base, because that is exactly where Hippos will look. Right. Well, they're going to be very strong. One of the biggest problems with them. Is absolutely no. I mean, he's he's. they've just been trying to give him space for the last couple of minutes, but just can't farm stacks. Well, he he has the ability to farm stacks with the uh, the new arcane well, orb and equilibrium, but that's like you get that's one in stack. And, and it's and it's also it's it's so hideously mana inefficient. What about the equilibrium? Yeah, it's basically if you were like you look at the vacuum from the logic is if you stack this count x times and it's amazing. But if you look at it from the perspective of the cooldown. You're not going to have it available for every camp you go to. Right, right. Dude, they I, are said, moving. I guess you're right. I guess it is quite a bit better. And this is going to be probably a pickup on the exit. Yep. Axe has no escape from this. He's got the blade mail, but it won't matter. Thank you with the crimson. It buys him a little bit of time, but his end is near. They even use the astral to ensure they don't have to hurt themselves more. That's even that though. That that's scary, right? That that cost. OD and Puck like 50% of their HP. Well, at least they've got pets who can heal them up nicely. That's some form. All the while Madara was just shoving bot with his illusions, making sure that the Morphling could not respond. Which is crucial here because this Morph, he's in his prime right now. He does so much damage with his E-Blade. Actually, almost completed the BKB. The timings are there for Hippomaniacs. They are going to get ready to aggress high ground soon. Roche does spawn in a minute's time, so if they can find a pickoff in the next 20-30 seconds, they can immediately take another Aegis. Keep expecting to see a, one of these two teams both play. They just could, uh, you can. Okay. All right, you, the dying's faring it out. Yeah, I think it's definitely coming from Vega. What I was gonna say there is, Hippo Maniacs. They might make that move if they won one game down already and they have a lead. They just want to protect that lead at this stage. Focus around the Roche bit because that's the only thing that matters. Like Huskar yeah. is propelled so heavily by Roshan. Very, very big deal that they just got the steps. That that's that makes those wards make it very hard to take a fight as Rainy. And you can actually see the movement from Adar, no, he knows he can actually hang around this bot area because Hippo Maniacs are so committed to that pit. Oh, Roche sure. is now up, but if they go in, Madara could go for base again. Question is whether you can risk giving another Aegis over to Huska. Ah, uh, it, it, it gets awfully scary. This is the biggest pass spike Huska's likely to get at this stage. She's going for Satanic next, but, you know, this he's, is the moment. He's got so much to work with in terms of the BKB and Halberd. <laughs> Boy, Puck. they are really not in position to contest this. This is going to die fairly fast. Puck scouts it out. The axe isn't here, though. They ping. They need to do something right now. This is the best opportunity they're going to have, and they're, they're going to be too late. Oh, 10% out. No, Roche is gone. There we go. Aegis actually Aegis picked up by Supreme get, this time. They need to get out they of here. They in. E-Blade through. This steel's going to be that Daphne strike. Tyler Grave will keep Supreme alive. BKB used as well. This leap is down to OD. They can move across the life break. No, he acts with oh, himself. They can't get the perfect. call there. He's going to be able to force stuff. He puts the science clips down. Gets rid of Curry straight away. He's going to move through Astro again. He's still alive. And now Madara arriving means they have to retreat. They're going to chase onto this. Saber Light will look to escape. They lose your old fruit. Kezu trying to get involved in time. Looks like Mage will go down to the battle hunger from Saber Light. But now vengeance will be had. As Axe has been found and should be ran down. Yules comes out. Lose your old fruit. And that will be the end of Mr. Saber Light. I think Mage straight up saved that fight.
He astros himself as the life break is in the air. He would have died and then hits the Sanity's Eclipse right after coming out. And as a result, because that life break, Camille, the Hoskar was way too low on HP. He did not even get a chance to eat that cheese. Right, right. Yeah, that that Husker with the da that the damage potential of the Husker there could have just destroyed everybody. And you you wonder now about the decision to put the Aegis on the Morphling rather than the Husker. Oh, you know what? They Hindsight's didn't want him. Always twenty twenty. They didn't want him getting Sanity's Eclipse again like last time. That's what it was. That's true. That's true. But but said, right now the, the, but right now the 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 Husker is arguably. I don't know. I I think I am all in. I think if I'm Hippo, I'm I'm more like. Let's well, all in now on the Husker. The, the Morphling has what he needs to be this this nice secondary core with BKB E Blade, rather than continuing to have Husker create space for the Morphling. And they're gonna do that. They're gonna set for for an aggressive push. Here. I mean, I agree. Like you're in the scenario as the Morph. Like if you wait for me and you shotgun someone down with E Blade, you've done your part. Then it's Huskar's job to carry these fights, and he can in the current state. But now without that Aegis, these trying to approach high ground here is I think it's very risky. Especially seeing Axe has once again shown Nothing. himself. He does Nothing have boost of travel though. Ships passing in the night down here. Ooh, a little bit close. Closer than they maybe realized there. And look at this split push coming out from Vega. They're going to pressure all the lanes and they're going to say, Alright Hippo, you want to come to our base? There's going to be a price to pay. Yeah. Hippo are like, where are our creeps? Dyer's bottom shrine. Good job from Saberlight nonetheless though. Like Picking up these boosts of travel means he can be the one back here. And Vega, they can't think about going to these fights. Yeah, I, I really... I, Madara is moving around the map quite intelligently for one set. He's he's getting a lot of farm and he's doing it very safely. Like, it, it's... He's making it look really... E he's making it look a lot easier than it is to not get picked. Uh, especially that movement the illusions cross the mid. Most people just stick them bot and push in, but he identifies that without that mid wave, there's no push opportunity for the side of Hippo. And actually, Mark, he's pretty deep here. And now the cool coming out a little bit too late. Terrible getting low, they'll shotgun him down. He at least takes the ET with him. If that's not the caster's curse, I don't know what is. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I might like, have to message him afterwards. I totally got him killed right there. Mahaz takes full responsibility for all of those that just lost money. <laughs> oh. Oh, damn it. God damn it, Alan. Don't just think of the players. Think of all the betters. They just lost money on that. Like, yeah, Madara's going to have this score at the end. No. No, he's not. Sorry. But they still actually apply pressure as they rotate Mage over here to make sure the Axe is stuck in base. Like we and said, he can respond quickly. And there's the escort quest again. As, you know, multiple hippo heroes are like, all right, we're keeping this creep wave alive, guys. They have to. They won't have a secondary creep oh, wave up. as Mage breaks it again. We're going to go in here. Science up. Curry is getting low, but he does have the cheese to work with still. Mage has arrived. He's got the Science Eclipse again. Curry, you need to be careful. That's great. Low health. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he's got the BKB, though. Uh, he's sustaining pretty damn nicely so far. I'll turn around on the melee, but... Oh, wait. Where are our creeps again? Yes, exactly. Almost like the side of Vega keep cutting those waves. And this just buys time, because if this goes too late into the game, this Terrorblade just takes over completely. Like, a Huskar is good. Don't get me wrong, but... Late game, Huskar versus Terrorblade. That is definitely a Terrorblade favored matchup. Yeah, certainly once you get to a certain point. Although it is it, it is concerning. I guess in a, in a relative Kezu. sense they're keeping up. That gap is staying relatively calm. Kezu is living life on the edge here. They yes, almost caught him with a call. And then he walked into Huskar as well. Yeah, and, and with the call, I mean, top look at his HP. Tap. He dies in like seconds. Nice the catch of this hero, incredibly elusive, but incredibly squishy to even it up. And there's the Aegis Reclaim, okay. as Hippomaniacs realize they're never getting high ground, so I'll just take the shrines instead. Nice will be on that next roast though, because you can give over these two, you say what you want. The third one is the pivot point. With the Refresher Shard, yeah. Let's just say double cool or double grave even double earth splitter could really decide to fight in favor of hippomaniacs although you, you do have to give a little bit of thought to controlling lanes better as hippo because 
Bigger playing stop. Oh, so Kezu? Kezu gets caught! Yup, Shotgun Nub is gonna make his escape though. He had enough HP Bigger and enough magic Ooh. resistance to be fine. Actually jukes him out and goes the other way. Kezu! Oh. Balls was... of steel. Wow. That, that was actually really cool. Stabilite's gonna look for him now. He's gonna pick up a TP. <laughs> Yeah, no, he no. needs one, but the call's gonna come out, he's gone, they found him. Oh, I, I, I had not noticed that he had no TP there. I thought he was just being that's... super cute with that with that orb misdirection. No, that's how he got caught. He uh, he was trying to yeah. TP out, and then he got caught by the call. Uh, that's not the call, the adaptive strike. Oh, okay, I, I hadn't seen that he was, that the initial adaptive strike broke a chance. All right, well, that makes sense. Or buck. But, you know, if you had to die at any point, probably a good one before Roche is up when the lane's pushed in so that your opponents can't do anything with it. Yeah, I was making the comment that even though the OD and the Puck are still behind all three quarters of the Hippo, that the, the, the gap is not increasing. The gap has been remarkably stable at, like, 1K or 2K, which is which is doable, right? I mean, MNT's pretty farmed. You know, he's got a blink Yules. The Hippo, Vega are still in, in, in pretty decent position farm-wise. Hippo have to just be able to control these lanes. They're definitely stabilized, and the thing to kind of highlight, again, is always going to come down to when you pick a Huskar, you are on a clock. And don't get me wrong, this Morph thing can do a lot for your late game, but the TB plus OD, that's, that's always what's going to come out of my mouth in this matchup, is if this goes too late, these two do a hell of a lot. Boy coming out on the side of Hippo. Butterfly just completely. That's going to be. Obviously makes him a little bit more sustainable, but that's a nice DPS item. Smoke Radiant on smoke here. Scanning. Yeah, but they'll know about this. And then his science comes in. Dazzles the first there. Now trying to move into disarm. Rubik's going to dodge out with the yours now. Science Prince gets dropped. The BKB already activated for Morphling. Means he can run down and finish off maybe next time. Muff gets low, but not low enough. The call's there. They dunk down on OD. They will split it through as well. No. It doesn't matter. They've already lost three on the side of Vega. Now Madara, he's trying to retreat through here. On the side, Kezu will run down Muff. But then he'll just TP Bob. out as he realizes he cannot help out this Terra Blade. Space created as Madara is still alive. We we'll, we'll go for the TP, but it's going to be a bold attempt. The zombie reveals everything. The adaptive strike. Lincoln's, oh, Lincoln's. protects Very him just nice. in time. Yep, just comes up. Well, Lincoln's pays off there. I still feel like the BKB might have served him better to fight against them, but at least this gets him out alive. But I think the biggest problem is that you know what you're doing. You're looking around, aren't you, Alan? You're going, all right, they took this fight. What do they take now? There's nothing. Right, that's... Again. <laughs> you already... Okay, yeah, that's kind of scary. You already know me too well as, as a co-caster. I'm looking around going, okay, you took a big fight. And? 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 Question mark? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it... You know, that, that kind of a fight, it just... It, it doesn't feel good to, to have a great engagement like that and then just be able to convert nothing because the lanes are just perpetually on your side of the map. I mean, you know, you get some money out of it, but that's going to be it. They're still going to be up I mean, in time for the Roche. We're past the point that they should have been talking about bots on a hero. They should have talked. You need to actively deal with the split push. This is something that Vega is using. They, they've had so much control over the pace of this game, um, even, even being behind. Yeah, dude. Oh, just oh gone. my god. Supreme with the invis room just walks in and finds the prime target. <laughs> that's a that's a good tip. Gotta get what time. It's like how do you like these runes now, boy? But meanwhile, you're looking to push top, the pings come out, but what's Madara doing bot again? It's the Terra Blade shot. And it'll even cut mid as well. So there's gonna be a TP back from the axe, but straight away Madara, he has been so tempered. No not to approach. Oscar just trying to get control of the mid lane, get that pushed in. Dar has to be careful, he needs to be able to go back to base at any point, but Sabrelight's here. Oh, they're going to go on Sabrelight, the life break forward down to half HP already. Buyback comes out for the puck as well, they're going to TP back to Dazzle. Madara just toying with him right now, and meanwhile on the top they are committing, the BKB was used, the Dream Call is already down, but they don't need to move out of it. Lip's going to be there. Madara needs to get back, no, the call, no! He gets caught trying to TP away! Oh my goodness! And that could be deciding right here. Mage moving in with his own BKB. He's got the Silence Eclipse, but he can't use it. The BKB on Oscar means he's protected. Actually, he hits harder. Lift's going to be there. Drags him back. They build the Silence Eclipse. Opportunity, but no. He's in the way. Shotgun protects himself in time. And now P 
Hexu will go down to Kari. There's the Science Eclipse, there's not enough. They morph up just it enough. Another call for they call OD as well. He does nothing to them. And it looks like TB, he's just stuck here committing to this push. He has no TPs. Back in his base, OD is down. They go for the throne. Hippomaniac here pulled it off. Oscar. Oh, MNT, I'm sorry, buddy. Your Yules is not going to save you. I mean, Oscar just hit Satanic and was back to full HP in under a second. Oh my god, that was insane. It's absurd, and honestly... I think, I, I think oh. Satanic is actually beastly in this patch. It is. It's the same thing good with Satanic. Just now Kezu Oscar. going in. They're going to get him low. They will be able to get killed on Morphin. Now Curry trying to fight against the BKB from Maze, though. Trying to stand his oh. ground with a regen on Curry. He still has the cheese to work with. He's going to eat it. Jeez. Madara is here now. Going to try and fight against his Sam comes out. Life break across onto the Undying. Meanwhile, the top act. He says, I need that final Rax, but he can't get it. Huskar trying to move across to help the BKB. It's going to be close. Oh, no. the back door. They don't have the damage. The back door protects and Saberlight goes down as well. Oh my god, that Rax, I think, was under 100 HP, but the backdoor regen kicks in just in time, saving Mega Creeps. Vega have a life in this game. They do, but they need to push fast. And honestly, you saw Madara, he had to walk all the way back. I, yeah. thought, I thought he was originally going to try and just run towards the fountain to just get himself killed because him not being in that fight just made it so easy for Hippomaniacs to That's do what a good they wanted. Question. That's a good question whether he should have done that. It certainly put, you know, we joke about the walk of shame all the time early on in the laning phase, but that was like the ultimate walk of angst. <laughs> and Axe will buy back the man that ruined Madara's hopes of defending is ready to defend this Roche. And they know how badly Vega need this to compete. Oh. Jeeva's coming in, oh, puck around wow. the backside. Now Titan silenced up, now going on to Dazzle to buy back out from Huska. But they won't have a shallow grave for him because Dazzle's the one who uses it and won't go down. It's gonna be Yules coming out onto the axe, missed time with the Earth Splitter, but Pexu needs to run away. Saber Light getting him low, the call's gonna be there. Should be able to just Cullen Blade him down. On the side though, Huska controlled up, the BKB coming out. No, he's just gonna heal up. They'll move away. The life break from next time means that he can't move across the chase. This time out with a terrible in the meantime. He's gonna oh, use the Sander. He turns around, the Sands Clips Muff's gonna be low. He's still low, he uses the shallow grave though. And Madara. He can't fight against Supreme. We'll bring him down the back foot though. Kezu, he just snipes out. They managed they... to get four members of Hippomaniacs, and Supreme is the last one left alive. Maybe next time here as well. The lift is going to be there. The damage is through. It might be enough to bring him down. But they have oh to back off. Vega kited out the Satanic of the Huskar. They knew the minute that he hit that BKB that the Satanic was on the way, and they just got out. So instead of be being back to 100% HP as he was during the base push, he only got back to around 50, and then when he re-engaged on the Terror Blade, they had enough nukes to potentially deal with him. The Sunder was spectacular there. That gave Madara like 2k HP to work with. Absolutely, but even then, you could see how much he was struggling to fight up against the Morphling. Well, this is probably the stage where you go, do I need more damage? Do I need some sort of sustain? No, Terra Blade, he knows what he wants. No BKB, nothing like that. He's going to be going straight for that MKB next. And ah, keep in mind, no. like, Terra Blade, he was disarmed for the first half of that yeah. fight with him. That's yes. why he wasn't killing exactly. him. Exactly, exactly. But I, I, I completely agree. Like, sustain is only going to... Like, you're not going to out-sustain this Husker. I mean, the level of HP reject... The amount of damage that he's tanking during his fights is absolutely absolutely ridiculous. You have to engage on him selectively. That was by far the most... The best that they dealt with him all game long in that last fight. Just absolutely beautiful on the positioning by Vega. And Madara realizes that he needs to be able to take advantage if his team creates positioning like that for him. And the other thing to look at now is Mandara when he gets back up. We're gonna try and get through the back door! They're oh, they're creeps. They actually managed to get it. That's gonna be mega creeps now. And all of a sudden, Vega, <laughs> they had a leg in this game. Things just got ten times more difficult. Oh Lord. Uh I love you, Muff. He just he's like, alright, alright. Follow me, Supreme. Let's I go. I know the way. I love it. Yes, folks, you did just hear an official declaration that Nahaz loves Muff. Moving on from really? that. <laughs> really? <laughs> Moving married. on from I, that. I'm married. I don't know what that is. Anyway, <laughs> we do have all is... of a sudden Vega finding themselves in a position. Yeah, they they yes. have had the superior lane. Con they've had the superior lane control all game long, but now they have to try and establish that through Mega Creeks. The the, the clock is ticking on this dire side. And that's They're gonna the run a smoke play. This is very easy to read, but the Morphling is out front here. Ah. Uh, all right. Well, oh, Linga's got popped there. 
because he had simply adapted strike talent. And that actually maybe made it a little bit obvious to them. Yeah. I think the thing to look at right now is actually more important than trying to zone out for this Roche. But even more important than that is how badly Madara needs a DD. I was going to say he needs level 25 for the attack range to deal with Huskar, I but mean, DD works too. This Roche, is, they have to do this super fast because they're, they're going to get pushed in on while they do this. This top lane is going to be in their base very, very quickly. Yep, this is a race. Can they do it quick enough to live? They actually caught Huskar here, going to drag him back a little bit. And there it is. Egg is picked up and on the Terra Blade. And, they and might have a chance. Barreling back. Like, they, they get a creep wave spawn, so they're going to be able to deal with these. And a nice DD rune on Madara making it even easier. But well, this is grim. At oh, least with the Aegis, they have a shot. Here. They're going in. They try and find the puck, but Kezu's out. out. Not like All this, he says. All the big abilities on both sides are up. That's the big focus right now. Buybacks only available on two people in this game right now. The Morphling and the Rubik. Even with the Aegis, it, it feels like Vega is, is, and it feels so bad to have Mega Creeps against you and probably having to take a fight in your own base. That is the case. Like, they're in the scenario where Hippomaniacs, they could just try and wait out this Aegis. There's no pressure on them because the Creep Waves are always barreling towards just, Vega's base. I just don't, I mean, I think it's probably the right play, but you do have to question a little bit whether that Roshan on the Aegis play was worth it. Oh no, that that was yes. the last component of the MKB and Terrorblade bought out on that. Okay. I mean he's got Aegis. That's true, but you know if you take that fight in your base, you either need that MKB or you're gonna need the third life. Now nah, you will not have that. Meanwhile, Supreme getting ever closer to that Scott, he will always hold him to buyback though, as he knows how crucial it is at the stage in the game. Just one bad fight, and Vega will be barreling down your mid lane. I feel like the, really? the opportunity is very hard now for Vega. I think as soon as they took the Roche, they should have sent Kezu back to push out top and then barrel down mid. That might have been their best shot. Now they're stuck in this limbo. Uh, it, it's so hard because your lanes are pushing in so fast with Mega Creeps against that you run the situation, you run the risk of, of, of winning a fight and still losing a base race. Up oh, shotgun, Pexy getting low on HP, the call, interrupted, maybe next time the lift on point. Pexy still alive, BKB comes out in the meantime for Morphling, the sleep is there on the Terra Blade and on the Rubik. There's okay, but play. maybe next time yours comes out, Earth Split approved, decent damage on the Pexy, now gonna turn around the Dream Call. Silence is on the Morphling, but the Shallow Grave will keep him alive, Stannis Clips down, gonna get him low, but no, he starts to morph up, he should be fine here, the call's gonna come out, Supreme, he's gonna just heal up straight away and look to get away from this, turns into the Undying, turns oh back God, and dies off. It? Are Vega doing it? They are, they're gonna find Sableye as well, they get two big kills, they can force the buyback out on the Morphling, but there is not one available in the Axe. Nice. And they've, they've got to address this top lane, but they're going to have time to do that. Man, I'm the telling problem. you, they're showing a lot of patience against Mega Creeps, and, and they may be able to pull this back. There is a big problem, though, in that you've just used your Metamorphosis, and you aren't going to get a chance to barrel down mid with it. You just have to use it to push out these lanes again. And this is always the worry that in the current state, every time they find two pickoffs like this, it's never enough to get out of the base. It's just, you know, I, I, I can't... I'm not going to flame... Saberlight for this far from it because his aggression I think has has really keyed Hippo in a lot of these good fights that they've taken but they got really split there at the beginning of that fight. I, it felt like there was no reason why uh, the the axe and, and the morph needed to be so far out ahead. Middle tower. Yeah, so it was pretty overly aggressive, especially trying to find a kill and undying on the side. Morphling had already used his shotgun combo, and now look at this Radiance screw back door. Yeah, they they pushed lanes a little faster than I thought. And they're oh, able to take a, fit, a, a fight at the Radiant base. Uh, they found the Dazzle. They're going to bring him in right now. The Storm's going to be there. Going to get him low. Trying to move in here. They should be able to find him in time. No Shallow Grave for you. No, and you no buyback buy back on the Dazzle. Huskar going Hopefully in right now. And there's some actually trying to use against him. The BKB down Huskar. No, he has to do something just to push them away. This is not an aggressive use. He's just trying to stay alive. Dara's going to move back in. Looking towards the now. He goes, wait, why am I going to the mid? Well, there's a Brax right here. They could even this up on Megas. All right, Morphling ready. Still got top lane, but there's no 2 3 up top. There is no man morphs for 40 seconds. They're going to jump right in. They pop the Lincolns. They disarm. They just move away. And now the reflection comes into effect. Supreme doing a lot of damage to himself. Needs to be careful. And they do enough. They've slept the rest of the team. The disarm's there. Mana dodge to get away. Terra Blade standing his ground. They're going to move in. Now trying to go in here. Park goes pretty deep. Gets him down to half HP and moves away. 
As BKB moving in, Supreme with the shotgun. Mace forcing his own BKB. Pex who get low on HP. He should be going down here. And now without the flags there, they have to go back. Regardless of whether there's creeps there or not, they know they can't sustain any longer. Yeah. Do, that Undying does have buy. Holding on for, for the moment. Doing it, Vega doing a much better job maintaining these lanes than I thought they were gonna, going to be able to. I mean, obviously, oh, like, six out of Terror Blade has quite a lot of push potential, but the other cores are heroes that can have trouble pushing. Exactly, and you actually saw that for a moment. He, we're going to see Madara go for the boots of travel. He changed his mind, though. Right. Wait, no, he's changed it again. He wants Daedalus, then he wants boots of travel. He's in this awkward scenario where they need to be quick to react, but when you've already got boots of travel on the puck, it's probably Kezu screaming, wait, I can just do that. You don't need can, to do that. Okay. Good. This is a this D ward is actually a great play by Senny. They needed to take care of that, which they should have known after that last uh, two engagements ago that uh, Vega had vision over that part of the map. And this is a natural staging area if you can deny vision for the dire. They need to do something soon though, because the thing I'm now eyeing up is the fact that Mage she's queued the sheep stick next. Once you get that with the refresher shop, the science eclipse, you can actually kill these people pretty easily. This is this is actually about it. This is really good composure by both of these teams. Because it is it is very easy to make a game ending mistake here as either side. Please tell me I didn't cast her curse to again. Oh, Kari. He's been caught here. He's going to be well down. Now he's going to shallow grave to protect himself on the back for the Dream Core. Controls up Supreme. Oh, BKB to move through. Kari just distracting him on the side. They're not sure where they want to go for Verona. The Earth split is out. Look, they just melt through Terrorblade. The buyback comes out straight away. Now Kari going to try and stand his ground against this. Needs to be careful though. They can now chase him to BKB's end. It's Sandy's clip. going to get him low. Oh, no. Life rate to get away. No. And he might make an escape. Shallow grave is there, but no. The pushback. Maybe next time. He makes sure the husk gun goes down. The lift is down to the axe as well. They've got the battle hunger if they want to use it. They slow him down the call. Trying to move through to find Mage. But he's just cutting him out on the other side. Kezu forces the supports to TP away and leaves Saber Light for dead. Husker? Husker was doing something, that's for sure. It looks. It actually looked like he was distracting them because originally Morphling yeah. went exactly here and it looked like he was going to tap buildings, but then he turns around in a Terror Blade. Yeah, that fight was super, super weird. I, it looked like they were just going to going to kind of try to take that fight methodically and go into the Radiant base as a group, but boy, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the communication breakdown was there. I'm pretty sure there was one. You do have to be, one thing I will say is, you know, on the part of MNT, you got to be really careful using and banishing that Husker if you're the OD, because he does get his regen during that. Speaking of MNT, he's going to go down here in the mid lane. Does have that's, buyback. As BKB being used, Madar trying to move in. Reflection will not connect. He wants to find something, anything. They smoke up. They're going to keep on chasing. Muff's Glimmer Cape will run out yes. soon, and they know oh, where he is because of the three. spirit. His spirit betrays him. He's going to go for this stomp opportunity. Does connect right. to sleep, and he is so damn fast. Yeah, M M Madara tried to juke that stomp, and they may have been able to get him if not. They have got the waves pushed out, but the problem is so much time wasted. And look at this, Huskar's up for 10 seconds, Axe in 20, and Roche, it might spawn in 10 seconds. But even if it does, can you really take it? I do not, man. This rework is still so weird to me. How does ET have 464? Hmm. Like it's drums... Plus yeah, it's the trank. It's, yeah. And, it, and then the wind lace. All of a sudden, the, the natural stat growth to, to move speed for Magi, coupled with all these percentage bonuses. Huh. All right. Yeah, wind lace is ridiculous value right now for a support. Like, I, exactly. I rarely see exactly. a wind lace not on a support. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. And that the, the percentage stacks additively. Okay. I mean, I say I rarely see it, and yet he's the only support with it. But still, you get great value, especially on melee heroes with this. Oh yeah, even the even like the the five you're seeing some of the, even like the six position captains buying win list. Especially seeing as Very melee right. heroes uh, of lower speeds got buffed as well, it's like makes it even easier to try and close that gap between you and Agi heroes. Vega are are, are are trying to control the Roche pet. Roche bond is just a little bit longer than they would prefer. I'm, I'm sorry, Hippo are trying yeah, to control Hippo. the Roche pet. Longer than expected, and look at the split push coming out. Madara and Kez on both sides, and Morphling is on the move. Can he catch out Kezzy? The problem is, no Invis rune this time. It's it's the, you know what's, what's, you know what mind screwed me this game was this, it, I just keep having to remind myself of the splash on the Arcanor. And that's, yes. that's got to be why Vega is having such an easy time holding off. I'm thinking like OD versus Mega Creeps. Whoa. But in fact, 
OD becomes a pretty decent hero against Mega Creeps now. It does indeed. And eventually he'll become a powerhouse because that Science Eclipse he used, he didn't double down because he saw the BKBs out. So he still has that Refresher Shard and we have That's yet to see point. the full potential of it. That's a very good point, particularly as we're setting up for potentially a game deciding rush fight here. Especially seeing as he's getting close to that Hex. He doesn't want to buy out on it though. He knows how important buybacks are right now. The problem is, if it's around this Roche pit and you have to make a choice, I think you buy out just because if you buy back, how the hell do you get in the fight again? I, just, I have to watch more of that Heroes Replays. I just can't quite... I can't quite get the new OD mechanics committed to memory. You seem to have that down. Yeah, you just always, like, you always have to remember. Just the way to remember how the splash damage, remember that he can farm Ancient. That's, yep. you're good to go. Yep. Maybe next time, he's going to spot what's going on here. They need to there work quick here, though. The Solar yeah, Crest the solar is making crest it so easy. He's dead so fast. Madara is nowhere nearby. That is going to be Roche falling. They pick it all up. The call. They've actually caught in a peg too. He's a little bit far forward. They should be able to find him. They should run him down now. Jumping in. Kezzy trying to get a work on this. VKB's come up for Supreme and Mage. Trying to move away. The Earthbird's going to be there, but won't connect. Madara with the DD. He's doing a lot of damage. He can fucking stand his clips. Oh my super god, blood. look at the damage. They the Aegis. Now the Shallow Grave is Madara. He needs to sunder someone. He can go for Morphling when he comes up. Is he going to do it though? Yes. No. He just goes straight into the Husk. Got turns around. There's the Morphling switch on the Supreme. And he... He's trying to fight against this. The disarm comes out, but Madara now you can go and fight against it. The shotgun, move it. He saves himself with the stolen shallow grave and the buyback there on Huskar. But it looks like maybe next time he's going to survive. OD with the buyback trying to get involved. Kenzie will run down Senny in the meantime. Dazzle is dead. And he got buyback. He has got buyback, but the Dazzle and is, this is not the concern. This game is still on. It is indeed, because the thing that is concerning is you took the Aegis, you took the cheese, you took the refresher shard. You might have two of those things, but you don't have the most important one, the second life through the Aegis. Unbelievable. This mega it's been mega creeps for like over 10 minutes. Vega are refusing to submit here. They might be one game up, but they want a clean sweep. He said about NIP having a chip on their shoulder. Vega got to be feeling the same way. Wow. Look at Haskar's next item. He just, he needs, it, you know, this is more about yeah. constant mobility in these fights. He needs to be able to move around and get on top yeah, of people. I like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if he gets CC'd, there's just only so much the Morph we can do. Morph is going to have cheese to work with here. They're moving in, though. They know Morph is not available. This is the best opportunity right now. No fight back on the Terra Blade for two minutes as well. Supreme tank a lot of damage, Dig on the back foot, Dazzle down to half HP, Kez is going to move out, Protection's going to be there though, Kari, now the call, Kari. connects on the both the calls, they're going to move in, Shallow Grave there from maybe next time, the same Mage's life, and now Terrified, he can't do anything, he's disarmed, he's finally going to actually get out of this, trying to deal with Kari, they're trying to get rid of the tier 4, Supreme down to half HP, the dump comes out, Odie's dead, Supreme's tail alive, we'll leave the cheese, now the call's going to be there, Pexu's been caught, he's going to go down as well, the disarm again on Madara, he can't do anything, he's got the sun and the Shallow Grave to protect, but no, he gets dunked, and it looks like it might be over, as Hippomaniacs oh. take the second game to even Beautiful up the four. Dota. My goodness. That was really cool. Uh, uh, I, yes, I mean, Hippo to some people will be like, oh, well, it took them how long to finish the game against